Okay, good morning everybody. Thank you for joining us for the Elkin Bible Baptist Church electronic worship. Uh, I'd like to ask you to sing a couple songs with us. Words will be on the screen for you. And then hang on, Pastor Rod's gonna bring us a message in a little bit. Um, be sure to comment, let us know that you're here. Uh, good to have everybody with us today. Time. 
Let's, uh, let's go ahead and pray before Pastor Rod gets started. Lord, thank you. Thank you so much for being good, for loving us the way you do. I pray, Lord, that you will speak to us in what happens through the rest of today and through the week to come. pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning. Last fall, I was talking to several people, and they were uh, worried in stress, and they just confessed to me that, that they're just really fearful, they have doubts, and so I began uh, talking with them a little bit and said, you know, next year I'm going to do a series on how to get over being stressed out and how to get over being fearful and anxiety and, and things like that. And so you may be thinking that this group of message, the next three weeks, are because of the, uh, the virus, but this predates that, and uh, we always need to know this. So today I'm going to look at the goodness of God, and as we're going to look at some scriptures of it. But I have a couple questions for you, several questions. Why is it so hard to make God the master of our lives? Now, when you think about it, that total commitment to Christ and just to trust completely in him and just, just say, God, I want your will to be done. And, and whatever you tell me, I'm going to do it. Why is that hard? I know it's hard for me, but, but I want you to think, why is it hard for you? Is it that we think that God will want us to do something that we don't really want to do? Maybe go to a place that has snakes and you hate snakes? Is it that you ask yourself, can I really trust God? Does he really want the best for me? And I think today, as we look at the scriptures, we're gonna answer that. And um, let me define goodness to start with. Goodness is, God is the final standard of good, and all that is and does is worthy of approval. Let me read that again. God is the final standard of good, and all that God is and does is worthy of approval. God did not give us the right to question what is good. Now, we live in a society where absolutes are, are look down on, and everything's relative, meaning if it feels good, do it. This is the way you believe, and that's truth. Well, there is only one truth, and that's the truth of God, and he gives it in his word for us. I remember I had a wedding years ago, and the wedding had to be done on a certain day for uh, legal reasons. So it was a family wedding and, and just a family there. So, so I got there and the groom did not, he, all of a sudden he got cold feet. And so he was trying to make up the decision of whether he should marry this woman or not. Not that there was anything wrong with her, but he just didn't know. So then he said, yeah, I think I will. And then he said, no, I think I won't, and yeah, I think I will, and, and we're coming down to hours, one or two hours before he finally said, okay, let's do it, after a lot of talking from me and members of his family, and, and so he finally did it, and uh, years later, they're happily married, but a lot of times, we don't know if we can trust people. And because of that, sometimes it causes us to wonder, can we really trust God? Does he really have our best interests at heart? And the answer is yes, he does. In Romans 8.32, it says this. He said, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not through him freely give us all things? So, if God gave his son and caused him to become sin, to take away our sins, and put him through all that anguish of 
perfection, taking on our imperfection and our sin, his sinlessness, our sinlessness. And then he gave us his righteousness and he doesn't want us to have guilt and shame. He's taken that all away. I think we can trust God like that. I know that if I gave my son for somebody, that you would know that I have your best interests at heart. Kind of reminds me of the story. I don't know if it's true or not. But a dad took his son and his son's uh, young friend fishing. So they were out on a bay, and, and all of a sudden the water became rough, and the boat started to sink, and the father had the opportunity to only save one and to hold him up. So he had to choose. Do I choose my son, who I love, who I have all of these expectations, who, who's going to give me grandchildren, who's going to, to take care of me when I get old? Or this young man that really there's no connection with. So what would you do in that circumstance? You can only save one. Well, in this story, whether true or not, I don't know. He chooses to rescue the other boy because he knew that his son was a believer. And when we think about something like that, we have to say, that is great, great love. That is great goodness that this man would put this young man ahead of his own son that he loved very deeply. Now, how you see God, how you see God is how much you will trust him. How you see God will make the difference whether you live in anxiety, you live in worry, you live in fear, you live in that. We will all at times be anxious. We will all at times worry. We will all at times be fearful. But if that is the pattern of your life, and if you're crippled by that, then you're going to miss the blessings that God has for us. But when we see him as he is, then we will begin to really trust him and know that he has our best interests at heart. So today I'm going to talk about the goodness of God next week, the sovereignty of God, and the third week, the love of God. So how does God reveal his goodness to us? First, we're going to look at through natural blessings. This is what happens to, to everybody. God heaps his goodness not just on believers, but also on unbelievers and all of his creatures. In Psalms 145, verses 7 and 9, it says this, Everyone will share the story of your wonderful goodness. They will sing your joy about your righteousness. The Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. The Lord is good to everyone. He showers compassion on all of his creation. God feeds everyone. God, he takes care of creation. That's one of the reasons I never worry about, well, back when I was a kid. We lived in an area where there was, Douglas Aircraft was about five miles from our house. The Los Alamitas Naval uh, Ammunition Dump and where they loaded the ships with ammunition was two miles from our house. The Los Alamitas uh, Air Force, Naval Air Force, was about two miles from our house. We were in a prime spot. Oh, the Long Beach Harbor was uh, about four miles from our house. We were in a prime spot. And during the 50s, when there was concern that the Russians were going to drop an atomic bomb, people in our neighborhood built some of them built air raid shelters so they could get in. And a lot of kids 
and a lot of adults lived in fear because they were wondering if the world was going to be totally destroyed. But I knew that it wasn't because even at eight and nine years old, I knew the truth that Jesus Christ was going to come back and that he was going to be on this earth. That's another reason I don't worry about global warming, that that's going to wipe out mankind. Can't happen. God is also a faithful provider. Psalms 145, 15 and 17 says this, the eyes of all, and I underline that in my Bible, the eyes of all look to you in hope. Now think about that. When people are really struggling, whether they believe in God or not, who do they call out to? God. There's an old saying that there's no such thing as an atheist in a foxhole. The eyes of all look to you in hope. You give them their food as they need it. God is giving, feeding all of us, believers and unbelievers. When you open your hand, you satisfy the hunger and thirst of every, I underline that, living thing. The Lord is righteous in everything he does. He is filled with kindness. So we need to start focusing on that fact, these facts, of what God has already done. Quit focusing on what might happen. Look at what God has already done and has already promised for us. One more passage in uh, Psalms 145, 21. We experience God's goodness when we continually celebrate what God is good to all, that God is good to all. I will praise the Lord and may everyone on earth bless his holy name forever and ever. Do you ever go outside and just, well, right now it's springtime. The grass is green. The river is up. The full moon was out last week. All these things of beauty, all these things of glory, the waterfalls, the animals, the babies, your friends, your family, your relationships. These are gifts from God. In James it says that every good gift and perfect gift comes from above. We also can see how God reveals his goodness to us through specific deliverance. Psalms 107, verse number one says this, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Let me read that again. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. I'm not going to take time to go through that whole psalm, that whole chapter, but I'm going to lift out four bullet points. The first one is, God redeems the helpless from their enemy because he is good. Your enemies, whether it be people or issues or circumstances, it says God redeems his people from their enemy because he is good. The second one, God rescues us from the shadow of death because he is good. When we think of the shadow of death, I think most of us will think of Psalms chapter 23. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That's because when David wrote that, he had full confidence that God was with him and that God's will would be done. And remember, David's a warrior. He's in battle all the time. He's facing death all the time. If you are fearful of death, you need to consider what God has done for you, the promise that he has made for you. The third thing, God heals our diseases because he is good. And usually we think mainly of the physical illnesses. But I think more of the mental, emotional, and spiritual illnesses. And that's what this whole series is about. The anxiety, the fears, the doubts, the worrying, the hopelessness. 
It says God heals our diseases because he is good. As you have the intake of the word of God and you start believing it, he will transform you from the inside out. The fourth bullet point is God protects us from the storms that threaten to sink our lives because he is good. Everyone that's listening to me now, you have had something in your life that would just sink it like you're on a boat and the boat is sinking and God reaches down and lifts you up. Kind of reminds me of when Peter asked if he could walk on the water and Jesus said, come on down. And he did. And he was walking real good and I don't know how long he walked, but all of a sudden he looked down at the waves and they were big. And his faith began to fail. And he started to sink, and he cried out to the Lord to save him, and the Lord reached down. God does that in your emotional sinking, in your mental sinking, in your spiritual sinking. God is there. And notice, because he is good, once again, I will praise the Lord, and may everyone on, bless, on earth bless his holy name forever and ever. Start blessing God. Start praising God. Start bragging on God. Think on these things throughout your day. Think of what he has saved you from, both his uh, salvation of our souls, but also how many times has he delivered you from, from accidents? How many times has he saved you from, from bad relationships? God is there. He's good. He cares for you. He cares for you. He's given his all. The last point on God's natural blessing is through God's son, Jesus. The undeserved goodness that he gives us. Romans 5, 8 says this, But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Christ didn't die for us because we were coming his way. Christ didn't die for us because we deserved it or earned it. We were totally in rebellion whether we were five years old like I was, or whether you're in your 70s like some of you were. We were rebelling against him. We did not believe in him. We were enemies of his. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. That's how much God loves you. Not only through God's Son, he gives us undeserved goodness, but through God's Son, He also promises future benefits. I'm going to go back to Romans 8, 32 that says this, He who did not spare His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall He not through Him freely give us all things? If God loves you that much, trust Him. When the worries come, just say, I know that all things are going to work together for good. You need to have some verses in your mind. You need to have passages in your mind. Even if you don't memorize them, but you know these principles of God, that's the best medicine you can take. That's the best medicine that will help you. Now, how are you to respond? How am I to respond to God's goodness? The first thing is repent of your unbelief and of your ingratitude. Now, this isn't talking just to the lost. This is talking to us that are believers. We need to repent. And the word repent means to change our direction, change our mind. So in the areas that we're fearful of, if you're fearful of death, you need to change your mind on that and to meditate on some passages that tell us about what heaven is like, to, to, to show that the best is yet to come. Repentance and faith go together. Romans 2, 4 says this. Do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? When you focus on that God is good, because he says he's good, and you can look back on all these other things that he's already done, then you will be transformed and God will take away that pattern in your life that you are always fearful. Once again, you may go back 
in it every once in a while. But some of you, you're, you're always fearful. You're always anxious. And, and it's just very seldom that you're not. And that's not the way that God wants you to live. Because he came that you might have an abundant life. He came that you would enjoy life. That you would enjoy life even when the going gets tough. How are we to respond to God's goodness? Rest in his goodness when you encounter adversity. Instead of reacting when problems come, learn to respond. The way I see that different, respond means... I know that something's going to happen. I know that this is going to happen every time, sometimes. And I know that this will happen. And get to the place that when adversity comes, you focus on, I don't know how he's going to do it, but God's going to turn it out to good. It's just like this COVID thing. The good that has come out of this hurtful thing, if you start sitting around and you start looking at it, the reason why you are listening, being able to listen right now at home is because of this. Because we knew that in the beginning, nobody came to church. And then we opened it up and some still can't come because you're taking caution for yourself. That's good. If you look at everything that's happened in your life, you will see that what you thought was really bad, God turned for good. Let me read the passage. Oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have prepared for those who trust in you in the presence of the sons of men. You shall hide them in the secret place of your presence from the plots of man. You shall keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. That's Psalms 31, 19 and 20. Oh, how great is his goodness. Why don't you just focus on that thought? Why don't you repeat that every day? Oh, how great is his goodness. And look for ways in your life and things in your life and in the scriptures. And then my last point is risk stepping out in faith like never before. One of the goals of my life is that I habitually give thanks as an unconscious response to all circumstances and all relationships in light of the goodness and sovereignty of God. And that's my challenge for you today is that you would habitually respond to all circumstances and relationships in the light of God's goodness and sovereignty. Father in heaven, I thank you for this day. I thank you for everyone that is listening. I just pray that we would be doers of the word and not hearers only. We thank you that you are a good God. And I just pray that, that everyone here that is... Uh, knows and, and really has a good view of your goodness that, that that would just keep getting stronger and stronger. And I pray for those that are challenged right now that they would start focusing on this and the verses that we have laid out that you are a good God and that we would always have be full of gratitude. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you next week.